guys feel that you've had some today where you've been able to meet each other, some exposure, where we talk about a variety of topics that you can hopefully build on. And the final one is opportunity, where we can hopefully find ways to have success together. And it's a mantra that we talk a lot about at Silicon Harlem. If there's any one thing we hope we can continue to do is to provide as much access, as much exposure, and as much opportunity as we possibly can to everyone. And so that's important. And so one of the companies we're very proud of and, and very proud to be associated with is Uncharted Play. And the reason why is not only is it a very successful tech company uh, focused on uh, energy and, and literally uh, reinventing energy, uh, but also it's led by uh, a group of people that really care. Uh, they were downtown, could easily be in Silicon Valley, and we would, we would go downtown and, and they had really nice facilities. And we would walk around there, and boy, we'd be, Bruce and I would just, oh man, we hope we, we can, I hope they come to Harlem. And, you know, however it happened, they ended up coming to Harlem. And they not only uh, bought a brownstone and converted it into their offices, but the thing that blew my mind was they built a speakeasy in the bottom of that building. And the reason why is because they said if there's anything we want to do, we want to provide space for the community. So anyone can come to Uncharted Play and say, I'd like to have a, a meeting or I'd like to have an event, and Uncharted Play has built a facility to let that happen. Not all companies do that, and Uncharted Play does. So I'm very proud that they, one, moved into Harlem, and two, they have a real commitment to the community. They have spent, in the year and a half that they've been in Harlem, some six to $700,000 into the community. <laughs> okay? It is a, an amazing thing when you have a company that's that committed into a community. Don't have to be here. They really don't. They are, I mean, they get begged by investors in Silicon Valley to come out there and locate their company. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. So we're very proud. Um, founded by Jessica O. Matthews and ran by Tiana Matthews. But we're going to uh, sit with Tiana for a while and talk about Uncharted Play. And we'd love for you guys to join in our conversation. Uh, so we're going to spend a few minutes just sort of talking about the company, their values, uh, Jessica uh, uh, and Tiana, you can talk about where she is right now in the world because she gets pulled all over the world for some of the things that they're doing and wish she could have been here, but unfortunately, uh, travel wasn't uh, working in our favor. However, we have Tiana, and if you don't recognize what I said, this is her sister as well. So come on up, Tiana, and let's, let's chew it up a little bit. And lights. I think All right. It's a little dark up here. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. <laughs> I should correct Clayton. Jessica runs the company. Jessica is our <laughs> proud font founder and CEO. Um, I am the vice president of marketing and PR. So, I mean, I run the company, <laughs> but um, I do help with messaging. And usually Jessica is the one up here, and I'm always in the back, like telling her to sit one way or another. So, this is an interesting perspective for me to be in. So, <laughs> so they would like uh, lights on the stage here. You can start with a spotlight on me. <laughs> We're going to continue talking as they figure out. Thank Otherwise, you. we'll have Tiana go back there with her 14 patents and figure out how to put the lights on. Uh, so tell us about Uncharted Play from the, from, from the perspective of why are you in 
great presence in third world countries, but we're not seeing a lot of presence yet in the United States. Sure. Well, just to start off, Uncharted Play, we consider ourselves an energy company. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we create systems to create off-grid uh, forms of energy for communities around the world. How we do that is, oh, light. Well, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> How we do that is we take our proprietary technology called MORE, Motion-Based Off-Grid Renewable Energy, that's what MORE stands for, and we integrate it into infrastructure. So, oh. <laughs> Um, so everything from roads to walkways, um, our goal is to really make the surfaces that we already walk on, already drive on, really help to augment that behavior to create a form of renewable energy by harnessing the kinetic energy that's already being generated. Um, so we didn't start out that way though. Uh, basically, our company, Jessica founded the company in 2011. And uh, we started out making renewable energy sports products. So everything from an energy generating soccer ball that after playing with it uh, for 30 minutes, you can get three hours of light by just connecting a light inside the ball, as well as an energy generating jump rope. And you know the company's been around for six years. And in that time, we really allowed ourselves to evolve and develop as a company. And you know, we saw the need really for our off-grid technology really in developing markets. So you know, there's always uh, interest in renewable energy technology, even here in the United States. However, the interest does not necessarily equal implementation. In the United States, our grid works pretty well. Someone, we needed lights on the stage, we, someone was able to flip a switch and turn them on. It is not so easy to do that in developing markets. And that's where our technology plays in because instead, it's very cost um, prohibitive to try and extend the grid to a point in these developing markets the same way as it is in the United States. However, if we can create off-grid technology, where from just in the community, from driving on the road, you were able to get enough power that can power street lights that are needed at night. That's just thinking about the power equation in a different way. And also adapting like this idea of energy, this concept of energy to a different market. Not everything that works in one market would necessarily work in another. Mm. We're gonna make it work, <laughs> I'm gonna <tell> <laughs> You know, it's, it's interesting in, in watching your company grow, what are some of the sort of challenges that you're seeing when it comes to just expanding the uh, company in and of itself, whether it's products, whether it's uh, locations? Well, you know, first thing I will say, um, Jessica always talks about it, is supply chain. Mm -hmm. How to make things, how to get things to one place to another. People, you know, I think working at a startup just for myself has really made me more sensitive to different other different businesses because you know the supply chain is such a hard process to fine tune and figure out. Even when we were making our first flagship product, the socket, we definitely ran into some difficulties with the product. Um, and it's hard because you know you have to balance out the time that it takes to solve those problems with also market demand. So if you go to market too quickly, you may not have a product that's ready to withstand the need to meet the needs of your customers. If you go to market too slowly, you know you might miss an opportunity. So really balancing that out. And I think that you know it's great to be able to work with the CEO who understands that because all that plays into everything. It plays into my job with messaging. Um, like when we say things like at certain points, are we ready to launch certain certain things then? Um, and it really forces you to listen to other areas of the company. Um, I think another interesting thing is just people growth. Um, you know, companies are fascinating organisms that have, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like with different personalities um, and being able to embrace all those personalities while also unifying it under one mission. And I think one of the strengths of Uncharted Play is that Jessica has such a clear mission that it really makes my job easy because I can build messaging around that. And we all as employees can follow her because at the end of the day, like Jessica, she made the socket first. Most people think she made the company first. She made the product first simply because she saw a need. She was inspired by our aunt's wedding in Nigeria when you know 
the power went out, and they turned on this huge diesel generator, mm. and it just annoyed her. The fumes annoyed her. I think the World Bank says that living with a diesel generator is the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. There are people dying of lung cancer who have never touched a cigarette in the developing world because of the current energy sources that are, made, that are available to them. And Jessica saw this need. She saw the power need, but then she also saw what worked in the society. She saw the way our cousins played soccer. Like, every single day our cousin would be like, oh, I'm going to be the next Pele. He was not going to be the next Pele. <laughs> but he believed it. And it's that pure belief that Jessica wanted to tap into. You know, when we design as a company, we design with high IQ and EQ. And just doing that, we don't just want to make products. We also want to make products that enhance life. We don't want to force people to use new technology that is foreign to them. We want them to get the most out of their life, to live their best life. So when we say just from walking on a flat pathway, you're able to get energy, or just from driving on a road, you're able to get energy, you're doing those activities anyway. Mm. But what if you can get more? That's our technology. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm. Anyone have a question? Go ahead. Devin. You guys did it without capital and got into the black. How? Well, so basically, you know, with hardware startups, yeah, they are very tough. I think the way I'm going to start to answer that question first is starting with prototyping. Um, you know, there is, um, I call it a myth, but there is a myth, I think, that people believe that they need millions of dollars of resources just to build their initial prototype, just to build their initial idea. Jessica built her initial idea with maybe $10. It was a shake the charge flashlight in a hamster ball. That was it. And then the rest, like, you know, she's not, she's a self taught mechanical engineer. Her background is in psychology and economics. Uh, I think that, you know, when it comes to science and building things, we really have to get back to the basics of it. When you're living your life, you are a scientist. And I think if we allow ourselves to embrace, embrace our own struggles and to embrace the way we live and our perspectives, that will allow us to come up with some fascinating things that can help our communities. And so in Jessica's case, it was the shake to charge flashlight and the hamster ball, which led to the concepts of the socket. She, you know, like for us, there was a seed financing round with like some friends and family. But yeah, we also grew really small. Like, we didn't invest in large office spaces. She worked out of her apartment, her studio apartment. I remember because, like, and I just want to make this clear, Jessica founded this company by herself. She had to prove it to me that there was something here. Like, I saw her messing around with her prototypes. I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but then she, you know, she showed me this concept, and I'm like, I got to help you. This is amazing. She started small. She was meeting in everywhere she could free hot hotel lobbies. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to say I need financing, but it's also very hard once you raise that money to make something of it. And I think that's another thing that people need to consider, not only just the prototyping stage, but r raising money is one thing, but making that money count is a whole other battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I think startups, particularly startup entrepreneurs, like embrace that time when you know you're working like you have that side hustle you still have your job and you can just figure out what is this that i have is this a business what is this product what is my goal because then the more you have the more you have are armored with that knowledge with that belief with that with that you know experience when you do eventually go into those rooms you know not every conversation is going to be a yes but at least you'll walk in with the confidence like, yes or no, I know what I'm doing. And I think that was the success that we had as well, even in the rooms in Silicon Valley. Like, That's some insight, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> you know, it's true, though. <clears throat> we get a, we get, we, we're in a great position at Silicon Harlem where we hear a lot of interesting ideas. Um, we probably get pitched um, every week about something. And... And we love it because there's so many great ideas. Uh, it's it's one of those things I truly believe that ideas are everywhere. You just don't know where the the, the great one may come. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to to then you know put a little bit more of the business hat on, which is, you know, if if the only thing you needed was money, 
then you should already be making some money. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to build products and services that can actually get a customer in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me keep moving. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to ignore any other questions. Anybody else have a question? Yeah, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, as an officer of Uncharted Play, do you have any suggestions to help people in hard um, areas hit by the hurricanes where they lost their energy, at least temporarily? Yeah, I mean, in places like that, you know, I think the, um, the immediate example that comes to mind is Puerto Rico, um, which, you know, we are internally having discussions with people there with ways that we can help um, with our technology. Um, you know, if there is an opportunity for, well, let me take a step back. I think that there are very interesting connections that these governments can make, particularly with startups, particularly with renewable energy, um, and best basically inv investing in new ways that they can make their quote unquote grid sustainable. So, you know, I know Elon Musk is heading down there and already, I mean, personally, I could think of ways where our technology could work. But, you know, I think the immediate thing before business opportunity is first just making sure these communities are getting the aid and attention that they deserve, which personally I don't think communities such as in Puerto Rico are getting. Um, but I would also like to see more of an effort on, and it, you, just, you are seeing this in like the governments within Puerto Rico, but governments here as well, more of an effort to look at sustainable technologies, uh, you know, so that way, if we do, like natural disasters are becoming a thing that we have to deal with, with global warming. We have to look at sustainable technologies, particularly renewable energy, as a way to help stem that pattern, but also to help these communities so that, so that way they are prepared for it. Do we have anyone else tuned up? Okay, here we go. So you mentioned that you were from Nigeria and um, I'm, all, I'm in cryptocurrency space. Okay. And that's one of the number one, that is the number one market where we're getting Google trended at right now in cryptocurrencies. Have you seen any examples, because now your technology can literally create money, right? Because energy cost is the number one cost associated with mining. Are there any examples of people in Nigeria utilizing your technology to create income? Create income. Well, I think that the question can be looked at from multiple ways. Income creation, also we can contribute to more of a building of income by helping to lower current energy costs. So, and that's one of the things that our technology does. Uh, we are currently working on partnerships right now to implement our technology in Nigeria, but we're looking at lowering, like de lowering some of the diesel costs that they're looking at on the continent by more than half. So just that alone in itself can, we see that as helping the continent move forward, um, particularly with just wealth building, which I think is really important. But that's a really good question. Right, other questions? We got one here. Peter, oh, somebody has a mic. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Bill Burns, and uh, I want to ask a question. I'm interested in, I have 32 acres of land in North Carolina. I'm interested in uh, developing that land for some kind of technology, either wind or solar. And I'm looking to uh, partner with some company or somebody to help develop that land. I've been in my family since 1882. Wow. My great-grandfather bought it in 1882. Oh so I've been with uh, Bruce since 1980. I've been his uh, guardian since that time. And uh, I've been building schools and things around the world. I've been to West Africa, throughout West Africa most of my life. But the other point is I want to know if you have, if you want to uh, partner with me to do something like that, I would be glad to uh, offer my, my uh, land oh. to do that, to build that, or anybody else in here. Oh my goodness, yeah. Let's do this. I think you're going to have a line of people. <laughs> Everybody in real estate is looking at their chops right I know. now. <laughs> well, I mean. And I want to talk to you too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, so, I mean, yeah, first of all, right. definitely. Um, and I think that just this exchange right here is such a fascinating example of how we in our community can help each other. Um, you know, 
I can't, you mentioned the question about Silicon, you mentioned Silicon Valley earlier. And I think that we in Harlem need to see the benefit of living in this community. You know, in Silicon Valley, there is a certain, there's like, a, a, the reason, one of the main reasons why we didn't move to Silicon Valley was because Jessica did not want to have to code switch. Harlem allows you to be your authentic self. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. yeah. And y y there are so many more ideas that have to be uh, explored. And the next best idea is going to be from someone who has not had a seat at the table, i.e. someone who is not in Silicon Valley. And I know that a lot of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, like I have nothing against them. I think it is a great area for innovation. However, more and more we're seeing now that our, our community, our world is becoming multifaceted and we have to embrace that. And I think that Harlem is one of the great examples of that. That being said, within our community, we should support each other, encourage each other to make innovations for within the community. You know, we, um, so we started a 501c3 called the Harlem Tech Fund. Uh, you know, that does a lot of events in the speakeasy, which Clayton mentioned. Um, but we also have events where we educate the community. We want to educate future entrepreneurs in the community. For them to have the belief that their ideas matter, their ideas could be the next million dollar idea. I mean, there was one woman who came into one of our events who created a hair weaving system that could lower the time of doing a hair weave from like, a, like an hour or two hours to like 45 minutes, 30 minutes. I mean, we were ready to invest in her right there. We saw the potential, <laughs> you know? There is so much potential even in, the, in that idea. In Silicon Valley, more than likely, they wouldn't get it. But we get it here in Harlem. And so, you know, and I think even just back to, you know, this gentleman right here, um, apart from the entrepreneurs, but even us as investors, we have to educate ourselves, you know, in terms of how we invest in these companies, the types of conversations to have, um, which is also something that we are invested in. I know Silicon Harlem does a lot of as well. Um, but that embracing Harlem, embracing our communities, using resources that we have, like that land, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that we should really consider as well. All right, we're going to take two more questions. Okay. We hey. already had a question. Let's see that one right there. There are two more people over here we should I share. Thought, you sure? I, it's really I good. Thought that would, <laughs> listen, I thought that would be a good place to, to develop an incubator for some organizations, oh. and I'm willing to go into a 20, 30-year lease on the land to do that. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, I told you, there's going to be a line of people, my yeah. man. Don't worry, and I'm second in line. All right, so All right. let's get to somebody, somebody over here, Sarah. What oh, happened? they're right here. Yeah, he already asked the question. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Somebody here. I have a patent on a product that uh, it's a, a cookware product that works really great on those cook stoves that they. Uh, and I've been to Ethiopia and tested it, um, and we've cooked the um, the big pancake. Uh, uh, injera, thank you. Oh, injera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, uh, but. Um, uh, you know, it, it's a it's it's a great product that um, really is very useful because if you burn the food on these cook stoves, which are have an intense mm -hmm, heat, mm -hmm. it can um, you know uh, really turn people off to the cook stove because mm -hmm. you don't want to burn the dinner. Um, so what you're saying is that you you look for um, innovation in products that uh, you might help um, fund and support. Yeah, I mean, definitely with uh, Harlem Tech Fund, we also want to help the entrepreneur find different resources. You know, there is talk of eventually having a fund and helping entrepreneurs with that. Um, but the reason why I, lo I think your idea is very interesting, um, you know, because you're it, there's a thought about like what the community is already doing and how to easily integrate it. Uh, one thing that we do at Uncharted Play is call it something called 360 sustainability. Is looking at the community first before imp implementing anything and seeing the best best path. Like maybe they like one community doesn't need our technology, or maybe they're they're doing things a different way. Um, you know, I think you're a great example of someone who has looked at the community and is built an innovation that can help augment already something that they're doing. Like for instance, like injera is something that's very mm -hmm. integral to Ethiopian cuisine. Mm -hmm. So your innovation can help make it easier for them to build something and promote their culture. Um, which is one of the things that I think that also, even just thinking about innovation within the Harlem community, we should really keep in mind, so. Yeah. Okay, so and then, okay. but we should definitely chat afterwards. I'd love to yeah, hear yeah. more Thank about you. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I know I'm evil. 
but that's all right. So the uh, I'm going to have to stop it because okay. we got to keep on with the program, but I'm going to let <laughs> Tiana say whatever she has to say. What, do you have any final um, comments for this guess, curious audience? You know, I, I um, well, first of all, thank you so much to Silicon Harlem for having us again this year. We, you know... Clayton is like another brother to m me and Jessica and just the support. Um, you know, for, with entrepreneurs, I I have a, a special place in my heart for entrepreneurs, for people who dare to dream to make their communities and others' lives better. Um, I think with any entrepreneur, um, you know, I've already said embrace time, really allow yourself to build out your business, turn where it needs to turn, like like I said, we started out making energy generating sports products. Now we're integrating our tech into infrastructure, you know? Um, but also be honest with yourself. I myself am better suited working as a VP of marketing and PR at this company instead of building my own company. There is such hard work and, you know, real sacrifice that goes into building anything great. Um, so, you know, in building your whatever whatever your idea is, really take note of that and really be respectful of that. Maybe you need to pause for a second to breathe. That's all right. You are human. And I know everyone wants to be push you to be that superstar superhero, but at the end of the day, you are just another human being just trying to do the best that you can with an idea that just might be the next big thing. So. How about that? Give it up for Tiana. <clears throat> We learn every day. I want to thank you. Thank you. And and please pass our um, thanks to your to your uh, CEO. Yeah. And her. Where is she right now? She. I think she just landed from South Africa. Oh, she so was in South Africa. She was there for a meeting. So I mean, that's it. Like Jessica. Oh my goodness. You know, God love that girl. She's. She was in five different, maybe like no, three different countries just in the past couple days. So, you know, she's still going to come to the company and, you know, do a meeting with us. <laughs> so. All right. So one more time. Thank you, Tiana. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to now move the agenda. We, got, um, we have a, this is called Jobs of the Future. This is.